Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Uh, this week, we've got Kim Billings on the podcast. Uh, she's a, a senior program manager these days, but she started off life coming off a, a, an English degree. Is that right, Kim? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then you've you've come in the broadcast media and out of the other side. What what, what happened there? Um, well, uh, where do I start? <laughs> Um, I've definitely learned a lot from broadcast media and the people that I've met and, you know, the sort of experiences that I've had. And I would definitely would say I would be open to going back. Um, so it's not the end of, of that sort of phase in my career. But um, I think it was a really good springboard, really. Um, you know, I, I started off in digital advertising for a company called IMD Fast Tracks, who are now called Peach, based in central London. Um, so starting in sort of um, obviously back then, back in the day, probably 15 or more years ago, um, it, we had beta tapes and what have you still, but there was the... Um, the commercials? Yeah, yeah commercials. Right, yeah. okay. Um, so we had the courier guys coming in every every couple of minutes. Um, yeah, and sending off to the te you know TV studios or you know t um, different channels and stuff, but we had a very small, growing digital transfer department, and I was really interested in that. Um, and I got as much exposure as possible, really, just to um, you know from end to end post production, working with companies like Framestore or AMV. Um, I don't know um, MNC. There's all the sorts of like you know post houses that I was working with. And agencies and then also the tv channels and whilst i was there met some amazing people got really good experience exposure and i left there and went to the bbc yeah and so when i did my degree which you you referenced earlier um which i'm very proud of um i had got some work experience at the bbc and um, while i was there in bbc um news um so i was kind of keen to kind of go back and i guess kind of felt like i wanted to sort of I guess cut my teeth a little bit at the Beeb, and so I left IMD, went there for a year, went to the BBC for a year. wasn't intending on being there just for a year, but I um I I got um I, I enjoyed it, um but I also felt quite institutionalised. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Not indoctrinated, yeah. surely not. No, what? no, not quite like that. Um, <laughs> I did a year there, and um, that was at White City, and then moved from there to ITV. Yeah. Um, and I think I kind of felt the area that I was working was like playing at making money and I wanted to work to move to a company that was more um, profit focused and um, more corporate, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, worked in um, the interactive department. Um, so working on live voting shows like, you know, X Factor and um, I'm a Celebrity, all these kind of ones. And it was interesting because I, I, I enjoy being under pressure kind of weird um yeah. I like that buzz that adrenaline that it, you know these live events give you um and also working to a deadline so I think working at ITV kind of um you know kind of answered those those kind of things for me um so did, did a couple of years I think there two or three years there um didn't want to do the early mornings anymore because I was still I was doing some of the early you know um what was it yeah good morning Britain kind of um all oh, right there. yeah yeah um, and when I left there, I went to, um, I've got to think now, Sony. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I actually moved um, from a permanent role into a contract role at Sony. And it was Sony Music Entertainment I started off in. Um, so back in, it was like Kensington. Um, I don't know if you know Derry Street office there. It's nice, yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah. Nice building. Um yeah, really nice location. Um, but so went there in a contract role, um, essentially was brought in to um, lead a project moving the Sony uh, entertainment and digital service providers um, over to a new digital supply chain. And I won't go into too much detail because I'm sure it's not that interesting, but it was, um, it was, there was a lot of politics involved because they were moving to this virtual warehouse um, platform which was outsourced and there was a lot of technical folks in the sony music you know sphere whatever that um didn't want to outsource this part then the nice kind of um shiny um digital supply chain they wanted to remain in-house um but so it was a there was a lot of politics and a lot of um i'd say like 
a neg- um, negativity about the change, but obviously I was brought in to kind of manage through that. Yeah. Um, and I really learned a lot and I really, really um, just, just a fantastic experience uh, yeah. you know, at Sony. Um, and I it only took me kind of a year, I guess, and I sort of proved myself and then got a permanent role. Um, I think, it, I think my role then was technical project manager. Um, and I worked through, that was the major project, but then worked on some other ones and got exposure to Universal and Warner um, and some of the um, smaller music um, uh, labels like Ministry of Sound. So it was, it was you know, a great, oh. great arena to work in, really. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then, so when I left there, I moved to Encompass, Encompass yeah. Digital Media um was a in a project manager role I think initially um I'd sort of um it was sort of interested in working in in tv and broadcast again um having worked in music and looking at kind of again work, still working in digital and supply chain really yeah. um and yeah it's, encompass was you know just a really great opportunity to kind of get back involved in tv I guess um, some really high pressure projects to work on, um, but some also really good opportunities to grow my professional career and help mentor some um, some people that wanted to move into projects and program management um, and develop an onboarding team. So um, I'm quite proud of the, the time that I had at Encompass in building those teams and um, you know, working through some like you know, it, you know, difficult times, but also the sense of achievement at the end of it is you know brilliant. Yeah. And again, again, ticking those boxes of there's a deadline I've got to work to. There's a lot of pressure. We've got to deliver on the day and doing it and thinking, wow, great. And just that sort of camaraderie that you get. It's, I don't think you can beat that. I must say, broadcast media for that kind of camaraderie. I think it's quite exceptional. Yeah. No, it's it's hard to beat and. You know, I guess uh, you moved on from broadcasters to to service providers, and you know uh, maybe a little bit more pressure as well there, but as well paying it forward. So you, you said you was helping, you know, mentor some sort of you know people who wanted to get involved in projects, which is great. Um, so just looking back from your sort of English degree, and you ended up in projects in TV. Did the sort of wind just take you or did you get lured lured in somehow or did you always wanted to, you know, find a role in that industry? How how did you sort of uh, end up in the in the industry? Um, I think uh, I believe in um, sort of fate, I guess, you know. Yeah. OK. Um, so I would say, you know, like I said, I, I, I applied, I think it was at least three years to get work experience at the BBC whilst I was at university I think it was maybe I started applying at college but I eventually got this work experience which I think I don't know what triggered me to want to get it I guess I I wanted to get work experience in an industry that I felt I was interested in working in and obviously yeah like you say English is very broad you know could have taken me any direction or also no direction right yeah Um, at one point I was thinking about doing a PhD and I, then I just oh, become a teacher or something like that. Yeah, hundred percent. I was totally yeah. thinking about that, um, and that was always my fallback, um, really. Um, but um, why did I go in the route I did? Um, I think, I think just I I do enjoy being deadline driven, and I am a bit of a workaholic, or I've got let's say put it this way, I've got a strong work ethic. It's how I've been brought up. Um, I like working in teams and, um, and I, you know, I do think there's an element of wanting to lead there, but, um, but in a more of a mentoring in helping develop teams and, you know, moving in a positive direction. Um, so I think when I had applied to the role that I got at IMD, I remember there was another role I was looking at, which was in event management, actually in Wimbledon, I can't remember the name of the company. Um, I thought so a few different roles, which I guess kind of were taking sort of some of the, those characteristics that I had yeah. to pursue in my career. But um, I, I was most interested in broadcast media. Um, I think just because I I was or am quite good with the written word. I like I certainly like crafting an email. Let's put it that way. I spend a lot of time <laughs> emails. Um, so I, I don't know. I was interested in kind of moving into that, and I guess just getting you know experience in a um high pressured environment and so i 
uh, that's the only kind of reason I can find. Like, I don't know. There wasn't like it was only one that had inspired me specifically. To well, well I guess you, you you then find out what you do like, and you know there must have you, you do like this work in the industry, and it sort of took you on a bit of a journey there. Um, so all these sort of uh, project roles, you be, become a technical PM or just a straight, you know, thoroughbred PM, whatever that means. Um, mm -hmm. But now you found yourself sort of working in a related industry of sorts. So you've come out of broadcast media, but you've moved into sort of cloud technology. Is that right? Yeah. And yes. th this this senior program manager is probably a, a, a step up as well, though, right? Um, so speaking honestly, um, I've, I've moved into a director position in a couple of companies. So I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, if you look at things in a, in a simple kind of um, role progression, if you're thinking of stepping up the ladder, it's certainly not been naturally step stepped approach for me. I've definitely moved laterally uh, several times in my career, and that has meant at times taking a step down because it was uh, I wanted to, you know, sort of um, branch out. So um, you know, but I, I, but yeah, I'm proud to be in a senior PM role and looking forward to how I can kind of grow further, obviously. Um, but yeah, so I'm working for a company called Cloud Factory now. Um, so Cloud Factory provide um, basically s staffing um, for um, companies in artificial intelligence, NLP, computer vision. Um, and it, we do have tools that we provide, but often we're using the client's tools as well. So it's a way of kind of bringing opportunity to people in locations like Nepal and Kenya. And we're fast growing in um, there's growth planned in Malaysia and um, Philippines but bringing opportunities to those that may not have had access to those opportunities, you know, before. And yeah. um, so there's a strong value driven culture, um, which is, is not just something that's spoken about when you start, it's, it's underpins every element of cloud factory. Um, you know, there's a talent department that's looking at investing and growing in those staff, the staff in, in those locations. And then there's what we call our core team, which I'm in, which is, um, obviously looking at, you know, I'm working in pro programs, um, working across our different clients and the different um, technology that they're either established in or moving into. And that makes it quite interesting. So I guess different projects that are working across could be autonomous vehicles, um, autonomous drones, ag tech, um, through to some of our um, um, big work streams, which, you know, I really enjoy being involved in are ones that are actually focused around documents. And, you know, an example might be, um, you know, Expensify, let's say, you know, most people have an app for Expensify if they're in, a, um, you know, most, you know, I guess, in a corporate com company, you might have ac access to that. We're at the other end of that processing those invoices and receipts. Um, so there's, I would, the best way I can describe the teams that we have is they either are the machine or they're training the machine. Right, I see. You know, and as and actually, as you know, the the that is like, was it like a it's the pendulum's changing and whatever the, the you know it's much more focused on training the machine to be intelligent and and to make um you know to make intelligent decisions and and what have you and then being really. The, hum the human layer to check and quality control that the output is sufficient. Yeah. So it's, it's quite different, I have to say, to what I was doing at Encompass. Yeah, but but what's the, um, but you've got transferable skills, right? Which yeah. is that they, this project management. Was it like a massive sort of sea change or did you sort of hit the ground running uh, when you moved on? Um, okay, interesting. So the change of a sort of industry and use cases wasn't a sea change. The change from a, a internationally established company to a company that's essentially moved from being a startup and they're in this muddy middle, which, you know, they're very open about. And I think they're probably beyond that, to be honest, but there's a lot of things they're establishing. That was a sea change. That was a massive change for me, kind of going from a, a world of, you know, um, you know, just having even having like Outlook and Microsoft Exchange yeah. to, to suddenly you're working in Google Sheets and, and, and Google all the time. That was a massive, massive shift. And I didn't realize how much of a challenge it would be, let's say. Um, but it's also been, you know, really rewarding working. Um, you know, in the, so I've been with a company now for nearly two years. Um, I've seen us, you know, and supported us establishing um, a task management system that's given us portfolio level view across our work streams or projects, let's say. 
um, you know, the company's doing, you know, fantastically well, con- you know, growing, you know, really, um, despite COVID, they've weathered that storm and continue to grow. Um, and I'm enjoying the fact that we're starting to really kind of um, build up our specialisms and expertise in areas. Um, yeah. Which is a real asset to companies that want to develop, you know, their technology. Yeah. So excited about, I'm excited about what the next, you know, six months looks like at Cloud Factory. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting when you talk to people about, for example, autonomous vehicles, you know, there's a sense that, oh, that's a year's away, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. It's really not. It, yeah. you know, it's it's a matter of, you know, I, I would say, you know, the next five years, there's so much work going into it that, you know, obviously, and I know there's far smarter uh, and learned people than I to speak of it, but, um, you know, it's a matter of, you know, it's very, very near future that we'll be seeing autonomous. No, it's, it sounds really exciting, and and for you, and for, and for anyone really, yeah, you know, you've got to really find your ideal role, uh, stuff that makes you happy, and you know, makes yeah. you want to get up, get up in the morning, and, and do that job every day. Uh, and if moving on, uh, you know, achieves uh, achieves that, then why not? You know, um, and so if people want to find out a little bit more about you, you've, you're, you're on the PMI. Is that the, the project yeah. manager uh, side of yeah. things, right? Yeah, PMI. And I know you've got my LinkedIn details there. Um, but I'm always interested to kind of talk to people about where they're at in their career and any advice that I can share, then I'm more than happy to. Um, so, yeah, happy yeah. to contact now that's Yeah, so Kim's on uh, LinkedIn. That's uh, Kim hyphen J hyphen billings uh, at LinkedIn. So I'd just like to say thank you, Kim. It's been uh, it's been a great chat uh, to, to find someone coming in and out the industry and, you know, uh, progressing well in their career. So thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. No problem. Talk again. Bye.